Good morning and welcome to All Saints Sunday at Calvary Episcopal Church online worshiping community. We're so glad you're here to celebrate and to worship with us on this major feast day of the church when we remember whose we are and who we are, both when we are alive and after we die. All Saints Sunday at Calvary. It is Sunday, November the 1st.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Almighty Almighty God, God, to you you all hearts are open, all desires desires known, and and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. After a reading from the Revelation to John. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people. The psalm for today is a portion of Psalm 34, 34 verses 1 through 10 and 22. We will read this responsively by whole verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. A reading from the first letter of John. See what the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have his hope in him will 
purify themselves, just as he is pure. So hear what the Spirit has, is saying to the people. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Other than watching a variety of videos of church services from around the world these days, and a couple of cooking videos that I follow, I don't watch nearly as many online videos, videos as I used to do. I think I've just pretty much had my fill of watching people dancing during the pandemic. However, there is one kind of video that I will watch every single time, especially if it's posted by friends. Laughing baby videos. We ones from infant to toddler age laughing gets me laughing every single time. I even just smile thinking about it. Even if I watch that same little one laugh over and over again, which I might have done, I can't help every time but grin and giggle, giggle along with that child. There's something especially wonderful about the videos of babies laughing for the very first time. There's nothing like it if their parents can catch that. Seeing babies laugh at their father's silliness or laughing at a big brother's sneeze, which apparently when you're very small is hilarious. Babies laughing is pure, holy, God-given wonderfulness. And babies laughing give us a picture of the purest form of love. Usually in those videos of the laughing babies, the child is cradled by a parent, and sometimes you hear the, another parent or another adult laughing back, mirroring, mirroring each other, the baby and the adults, everybody laughing, because they can't help it. Things happen along the way when we grow up, but all of us were that laughing baby one time. We all, no matter how old we are now, no matter our challenges, our dysfunctions, our bumps, our warts, our disappointments, our failures, all of us had that moment of discovering pure and ho holy laughter and being loved with delight just because we had discovered at some perfect moment that miracle of human laughter and shared it with the ones who loved us the most. That moment of unconditional love given from a child to everybody else in their orbit, that moment of love given by the creator to that child 
because of their creation. That love that then radiates from that child out into the world through their pure laughter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. John wrote that in the letter to a group of churches that were struggling with the false prophets of the time, struggling with dissension, not laughing. The writer of this letter, we call John, sought to reassure those troubled people that Jesus Christ is living, true, light, and love. The letter urges them to watch Jesus, follow his lead, believe in his work that he did while he was alive, and in the work that was being done now after his resurrection. And they, the letter encouraged the, these people to know that by his resurrection, we will all be like him after we die. It's a letter of hope, encouragement, and promise of God's love. We are children of God through God's love. Love as pure and lovely and fun as open and open as the love shown by the first laughter of a child. That moment when we know in our innocence that we are purely loved, and utterly dependent upon our Creator is that love that God has for us forever, even if, even when, we forget that love as we grow. Today is All Saints Sunday, and while strictly speaking, we traditionally name today that we who are alive now are all saints of God, active and free in God's promise of eternal love, and then, and then traditionally we remember those who have died tomorrow, All Souls Day, in the context of a culture now that is moving so quickly, and with people who don't have much time to stop to attend even an online liturgy, and living in this time of a global pandemic when we need to hear all the good news that we can we are now celebrating all of our saints today, living and dead, those who are God's children now and those who are God's children even as they see God face to face. John wrote, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When God is revealed, we will be like God, for we will see God as God is. And that revelation of God comes through Jesus Christ to us, resurrected into God's full glory. We are all tied together in God's time. The living saints, alive in 2020, this incredible and most difficult of years. The saints who have come before us, those we love but see no longer, the saints who have gone before us in our families, our communities, our church. In the mystery of God's love and in God's time, we are all woven together in a blanket of love that will never unravel. A blanket like the one that wrapped us in love when we laughed for the very first time. Some people believe that babies know God intimately, that they remember the place where they originated and the pure love of God's arms, and that their laughter and love is a reflection of God in them, a gift for us who have grown and forgotten that early moment of knowing the ineffable mystery of the Creator. And when we die, we are born in a new way, born back into the arms of the Creator who wants to receive us with that same pure love, received back into the mystery that was always there for us, the gift of life and light that God means for us to have always. Those we miss so much, those who died in our community this past year, 
all those who will, we will pray for in a few minutes, those in your own family and in your circle who have died are well, whole, and healed. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well, God told, God through Christ told St. Julian of Norwich, and we have inherited that promise. John told his readers that we know we are God's children now, children of God's love, but that what we will be like is not yet revealed. I believe with all of my being that what we will be will be akin to that wee baby that we all once were, absolutely safe in God's arms, utterly dependent on God full of the perfect knowledge of creation, laughing and laughing and laughing with the one who loved us first, being held safe in the arms of the Trinity, God, Son, and Spirit, and maybe, I think, with Jesus' mother Mary being there and holding us close for good measure. Beloved, we are God's children now, and always will be. Hear that laughter? That's you. That's you and God. Amen. Let us join our voices together in the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He, he will, will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look, look for, for the, the resurrection, resurrection of the dead, dead and, the and the life of the world, world to come. come. Amen. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. We bring into your eternal presence our prayers and intercessions as we say, in life and in death, we belong to you, God. Let us follow God's way of love. You have called your church to be your children, O Holy One, and to live in the spirit of Christ. Bless and sustain us until we join with those who have led the way into your eternal presence. We pray for the faith communities of all saints in Minneapolis and Northfield. At Calvary, we give thanks for the lives of all of our saints, past, present, and in the future. In life and in death, we belong to you, God. Let us follow God's way of love. You bring into your glory a multitude from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, almighty God. Let those who exercise authority in the world live in the light of your eternal wisdom. In life and in death, we belong to you, God. Let us follow God's way of love. Your eternal glory fills heaven and earth, eternal God. Bless the poor in spirit and those who mourn the meek and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. 
the merciful, the pure in heart, and the peacemakers, and those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. In life and in death we belong to you, God. Let us follow God's way of love. You have called into being the nations of the earth. Guide our nation in this election week to be the nation we all desire to be and the people we know we can be. Help us to be our best selves in the days ahead, loving our neighbors as ourselves, treating one another with respect and reserve, and lead us to be a country of inclusion, justice, compassion, and equality, where all people may find their life-giving work and live good and fulfilled lives. In life and in death, we belong to you, God. Let us follow God's way of love. Listen for those who call in their affliction and save them from their troubles, especially Hal, Ray, Emily and Hank, Pat, John, Mike, Haley and Dustin, Dex, Joy, Miki, Carol, Dan and Holly, Tom and Ruth, for favorable seasonal weather to allow for good crop harvest, and for all who come to Rochester for hope and healing. Let us exalt God's name together as we offer our grateful thanksgivings, especially for all of the children who are part of our community of faith. Salvation belongs to our God and to the Lamb. We remember those who have died and entrust them to your eternal glory. In life and in death, we belong to you, God. Let us follow God's way of love. We give thanks for the flowers given for our altar this morning and we give grateful thanks for Phil and Sue Einspar and their ministries here at Calvary. They've given these flowers in memory of all who have died from this community in the past year. Let your eternal glory shine to cast away all darkness by the light of your presence, O God. As we join the heavenly host to worship you in our prayers, let the Lamb of God guide all people to the springs of the water of life and let your spirit wipe away every tear from every eye. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess, we confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against you, you in thought, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And again, good morning and welcome to Calvary Episcopal Church on this All Saints Sunday. Thank you for being here. A couple of announcements to make. If you are watching this service, before 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, and you are a parent of children from preschool through fifth grade, remember that at 10 today, we, Brian Williams and I, will be meeting with those children at 10 o'clock on Zoom on a link that you should have received in an email from Colleen to Mimi. We will be doing a short work on All Saints and Brian will be leading a song with our kids, so I hope that you will get your kids one more time, I know, in front of that computer screen. We miss them, and we would love to see them and see you. We continue in the second week of our pledge drive, and we want to thank all those who have already made their pledges, and ask those who have not yet done so to please continue to prayerfully discern what they might give, what you might give, to God's work here at Calvary. Please keep an eye on our visitor and on our website and our Facebook page as our stewardship committee will be continuing to plant little videos and little uh, fun little things for you to watch and learn about as the next few weeks go on. Thank you again to all who have given, not just in the pledge drive, but given so generously 
over the past many months here um, so that we can keep doing what God has called us to do in this church. You also have received from me and the visitor a week and a half ago a reminder of all of the prayer resources that are around both locally here in the Episcopal Church of Minnesota and also in our national church um, as we approach and go through November 3rd, Election Day. This afternoon, um, our presiding Bishop Michael Curry is part of a service, an ecumenical service at the National Cathedral. That information is in the visitor and you can also go to the National Cathedral's website to find out more about that. It will be live. And then on Tuesday, November 3rd, remember that in the Episcopal Church of Minnesota Facebook page, there'll be an all-day prayer vigil with prayers offered once an hour. And then in the end of the evening, our bishop will finish the night with Compline. Here at Calvary Church, if you are a member of the church, you are permitted to come into the church on Tuesday from 9 until noon. There are instructions in the visitor that went out on Thursday. Four people will be able to come in at a time at 20 minute intervals to pray, meditate, and to see your beloved church again. This will be the first time we've opened the church since the day we closed it on March 13th. Election day seemed the right day to do that. And now let us walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, 
You have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new, the new covenant, which is shed for you for, and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Uh -huh. 
Let us enter into a few seconds of silence as we prepare ourselves to remember through prayer and thanksgiving the lives of all who have died at Calvary this past year, but also all the lives of the families and friends and loved ones that you have sent us to remember today. Let us pray. Almighty God of your mercy, we remember and pray for the lives of Nancy Hayworth Dingle, Robert H. Gunderson, Mildred V. Swenson Hallberg, Patricia Patty Ann Merrill, Susan Keith Ricketts, Matthew Russell Abst, Sally Allison, Chance Anglin, Betty Bauer, Robert Harding Bunderson, Helen Carlson, Jim Carlson, Roy Carlson. We remember and pray for Sally Doty, Megan Easterly, Chad Grover, John Haley, Edward Jed R. Harris, Jack and Dinah Ivans, Jill Ivans. We pray for Robert Cool, Stephen Larson, Flora Lennertz, Andy Petulus, Roy and Jan Pedersen, Lynn Pewitt, Carl Peach, for Lila Ruth Smith, Lillian Ruth Stanfield, Merle White, Elvira Youngers, and Bruce Zingler, and for all those who you hold in your hearts with love, we pray. God of all, we pray to you for those we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, creator of mercies and giver of comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with all who mourn, that casting all their care on you, they may know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray together. Eternal, Eternal God, God, Heavenly, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living, living members of your Son, our, our Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ. And, and you, you have, have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, is with you now and will remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to you. Amen.